Hello and welcome to the Money Magpie podcast. If you're watching this podcast, don't forget to share and like the video. And if you're listening or watching, just tell everyone you know how fabulous it is because, hey, you know it is. I'm Jasmine Bertels. I'm the founder of Money Magpie, and I'm joined today by Sam North from the investment platform eToro, which offers users all kinds of ways to get into investing and all kinds of products to invest in, from stock market companies in all sorts of stock markets to crypto and CFDs. Thank you so much for joining me, Sam. Jasmine, it's a, it's a pleasure to be on. Now, I just went through some of the aspects of eToro, but you know it better than me. So how would you describe the platform and how you can use it? Well, yeah, I, I think if, if you were to ask the, the actual users of eToro, they'd probably give you, you know, a relatively similar answer, but they'd also talk about you know, bits here and there that they prefer to others. I mean, when I go around and, and do uh, you know, the webinars or the seminars, you know, I, I sort of dress it up, it's say it's one of the world's leading social investment networks and platforms where, as you said, people can invest in all of those things. You said crypto stocks, CFDs, ETFs, whatever it might be, commodities, of course, all the craze right now. Uh, but we also look to do it in a way where we can enhance investors' sort of financial education. So we've created, I say we, eToro have created this um, sort of multi-asset investment platform, but it's built on this social collaboration. So users can share ideas with each other. They can interact. They can bounce these ideas off each other on our user feed, talk about the recent news that's come out, talk about potential ideas that they may have and they can log in you know on their phone tablet computer laptop whatever it might be and and, and do that and access all of that information there so yeah i mean we, we actually just recently but we now may in, in january we just uh, we launched stock investments in in the us too so the company's come on a long way and, and yeah continuing to to grow yeah, so you, you've mentioned people can learn from each other and you also mentioned seminars because you've got quite a lot of educational materials on eToro. So what have you got that people can use for free if they're just starting out as investors? Yeah, well, I, one, firstly, I think it's important that it is free, right? Um, I think, you know, we've seen over the last you know, two and a bit years, the rise of the sort of retail trader and retail investor to, to levels we've, we've never seen before, you know, for you know, a few reasons. Obviously, the the pandemic sort of you know, helped people, you know, take control of their own finances as well. We saw that. But in terms of the, the education, you've got guides where people can read about all the different subject areas, you know, and that could be as basic as what is a stock or what is an ETF? How do I invest in this and that? You know, what is risk management? Just loads of written guides. And on the flip side, there'll be people that, you know, don't necessarily pr learn the best way from reading and visually or, or audible is, is the way to sort of go for them. So we have podcasts, you know, where we talk about them, the main sort of events in the markets or whatever it might be from the week that's happened. Uh, and then there's video guides as well for people that do want to sort of see the visual side of things, webinars, regular webinars, minimum three a week. There's more on top of that every month too, and, and special webinars if there's something going on in, mm -hmm. in the market. And then you've got the community side as well. So a lot of information there for free. There's no sort of expiry date on, on any of it. There's no maximum time a user can read it, listen to it or whatever. So yeah, there's a lot of information out there for people to, to take advantage of so it really does sound like it's it is a genuinely a good platform if you're starting out because you know i'm always talking about how people can start investing because that does seem to be the hardest part of all of it frankly loads of people want to invest but they're scared even to start so what's your advice for people who are are afraid honestly to take the first steps yeah, and I've definitely got mates that are like that or have been like that and then just maybe recently have sort of taken the, the steps to get in. I think it's important for for anyone that's doubting it or thinking about whether to do it. It's, well, understand why people do invest, I think is important because if you can see why, you know, a certain group of people do it and benefit from it, then it makes more sense to think, you know what, that, that could be something for, for me. So, mm. I mean, you've seen over the years, I mean, at the moment, inflation is is killing the stock market right now in 2022. 
but historically the stock market outperforms inflation over a long period of time. So I think it's important to understand that it is, you know, a medium to long-term thing investing. And, you know, if we have a look at some of these facts, and actually I was just looking today before coming on. So I was born in 1991 mm -hmm. and the stock market, the S&P 500, so the largest stock market in the world, most traded stock market in the world, has only finished down year on year seven times in those, what am I, how old am I now? I'm 30. In, in, those, in those 30 years, I mean, it looks like it's going to be eight, but you never know. Um, so, you know, the, the, the history is on your, on your side here. I think average return 7% a year by just investing in, in that particular S&P. So, you know, there are questions I think people can ask themselves, you know, do I have maybe like an emergency fund just in case, you know, I need this money. Mm -hmm. Do I need it in a month, two months? Like if that's the case and you do, then I wouldn't recommend investing right now. Mm -hmm. But history is on your side. You can get those returns longer term. Certainly when you have that sort of mindset that you don't need this money, it becomes a lot easier. You know, am I, you should probably ask yourself, are you, are you committed as well to sort of having this money, uh, you know, or for the future of sort of leaving it alone for two, five years, for mm -hmm. example? And mm. if you're comfortable with that, it becomes a lot easier. And look, the, there's going to be ups and downs. So there'll probably be newer investors. Let's say someone started investing in January this year. Yeah. They're panicking right now, probably, mm. because it's the, you know, the first time in a while markets have really been sort of aggressively oh. lower for a sustained period. Mm. So it's, it's important to understand there are going to be ups and downs. But like I just said, in the 30, last 30 years, the biggest most traded equity market in the world has only been down seven of those 30. So that's a positive and, and it, it helps to put, put things in perspective. Yeah. And I suppose there's an argument to say that right now, or at least, you know, in the next year or how, however long it takes for the, the market to bottom out and nobody knows, but you know, it, it now is probably one of the best times to buy into the stock market. Oh yeah. I couldn't agree more. I really couldn't agree more. And, and, and it comes down to, as well with this, people might say, well, do I buy right now? Or, you know, do I buy, and I know you're a fan of this as well, sort of the dollar cost or pound cost averaging approach. Yeah. And you know, if let's just say someone had a lump sum now, bought right now, and it turned out to be the low for the next few years, you look like an absolute genius. And it'd be amazing. <laughs> yes. But look, look, time in the market is, is, is ne next to impossible in terms yeah. of being, you know, really, really specific about it. So my view on, and the way I certainly would be looking to, you know, attack this market now would be, you know, every month or every couple of months or every time I get paid, look to, you know, sort of dollar cost average into these markets. Like you said, you know, people have, have said you, you make your money in a bear market, in a correction. Mm -hmm. And historically, over time, the market, as we've seen, does go up. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, if the market does come lower and again, you can afford to, in your mind, lose this money, even though history says you won't. Uh, there's certainly some some good opportunities to be had. Mm. Now, just to go back to eToro, um, I'm wondering how do you actually set up an account on on your platform? Because again, you know, this is something that stops a lot of people who want to invest and they get think, okay, I've got to set up an account. Oh, how do I set up an account? Oh, I don't have. So, you know, literally, how do you do it? Yeah, you're you're so right, and, and I, you know, what I have this issue with i don't know say i wanted to set up an account on some website mm -hmm. you know when it comes to doing that i'm just always like oh god this is going to be so long yeah. and i mean with, with eToro it's not uh and but i would say the fact that it's an easy process doesn't mean we don't do all the checks and all the verifications and you know to, to keep the account safe because we do and that's important so this just you know take someone on a quick journey say they did want to you know sign up and that could be via the app on their phone or they can do it on a web browser you'd fill in your your sort of your details and you, you then verify your identity with id and, and all of that and that's checked by uh, all of our sort of internal teams to make sure that the account is safe um and then really the the user from that point once it's been verified they can uh, deposit and that could be as little as 10 pounds at the moment in the uk uh, mm -hmm. or even if they wanted to just wait a little bit to look at all the information try uh the virtual account as well you can do do that too so it it really is and i i'm not sure maybe an easy process is the right thing because that maybe that seems like the checks aren't done but they are it's a straightforward process i would say and uh yeah it's um it's, it's not too too time consuming
So for the for the newbie investor, um, I mean, I know that a, a lot of millennials and Gen Zs immediately are going to crypto. I personally wouldn't suggest that. I, I would go, you know, as you know, you and I have spoken about this before. I I think always spreading your bets, spreading your money across lots of different companies, types of investments is good. And and of course, funds are a, a really good way to do that because it spreads it for you. What types of funds can can people access on the platform if if that's where they'd like to start? Yeah, I mean, there, there's, I mean, whatever it might be, if someone might come onto Twitter with a view of, of an area they do want to invest in. So there's like a discover section mm-hmm. and then you can split it up through commodities, currencies, ETFs, and with the funds that are within there. I think there's last time I checked, there was 250 odd. So there's quite a lot to go through now. Uh, my my sort of personal view is is with with these you want to go for the the most traded the most uh, sort of popular mm-hmm. ones the ones that most people are going to do the sort of uh, when I say most traded you know they're not going to be super super volatile they're not going to swing like say a crypto asset might do at the moment ten percent in a day so mm-hmm. I'm like yourself I'm a fan of, of the funds and I will diversify through that and it might be that it might be a fund that's dedicated to a certain industry or a certain geographical area um as well so i i think each person will will have their their sort of favorites i mean i when i the first time i ever started investing the first thing i invested in was uh an etf tracker of the s p 500 and the FTSE and, and european equities as well and i just every month would would add to that um and and for me that that's proven over the last 14 well no hang on yeah sort of last or 10 years or so to be you know a really good thing to do but there's going to be moments where the market moves lower and it's just having that patience and understanding that you know you you shouldn't just get in once Mm. avoid that lump sum into just one fund it might be you have an idea you have the funds that you like and it might be every month or every quarter and you're just getting in uh, on a, a sort of regular basis and then, you know, as we're talking about easy or rather straightforward ways to invest, one probably to me the, the greatest thing that eToro has is the ability to copy other investors. So, you know, talk about easy. You just pick an investor who's doing really well and go, I'll, I'll do that then. Can you explain how that works? Well, that's it, right? I mean, some of these, um, you know, popular investors, we call them at eToro, are amazingly good, you know, consistently beating the market uh, or even when the market is significantly lower they're outperforming it then as well which is obviously something that's very good so a user what they 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 could do they could again you can find this all on the discover page but they might click on one of these popular investors and decide that essentially they would like their funds managed by this person so every trade or investment that these investors do i essentially would do the same so i could click copy on you know mr john smith let's call him and every single new position he takes on would replicate in my account as well but i'd also you know if he was originally five percent of his portfolio is invested in apple five percent of the money that i put in is going to be invested in apple and so on and so forth so they essentially would would manage your money just from doing their investments and obviously the beauty is you can see all of their sort of their history what they've traded in their monthly returns all of this kind of stuff as well and of course if you know after a while you 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 want to take your money out one click and 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 you can sort of get out of that 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 too and they get a little little kickback from that don't they because you know obviously you can't just do that sort of thing for free yeah get ever i mean i can imagine that i don't think anyone would do that for free in this day, <laughs> day and age, they? um but no and, and and that's an incentive for them right to mm. keep performing well keep delivering returns because if i was in investing with a you know popular investor and you know it was just month after month of, of losing money you know i'm not going to stick around of course so mm-hmm. the fact that they've got an incentive to uh pr- produce these returns um and interact by the way with you know the the people that do copy them they have sort of these open forums they do newsletters it's uh i mentioned before you told you know it's sort of a real social place but it's, it's it's got that good community where you know if someone does ask a question you know why did you do this you know what's your plan with this how long do you usually hold positions you know they're, mm-hmm. they're more than happy to answer that 
And then this crypto, I mean, I've already mentioned that, you know, lots of millennials and Gen Zs go straight for it. Um, I personally think it's something, you know, you add on when you've, you've got decent holdings elsewhere. But hey, uh, you know, it's still massively popular, even though it's right down at the moment. So what can you buy in that e area on eToro? Well, you, you could buy the different assets. So I imagine a lot of people would have heard of your your Bitcoins and your Ethereums and you and you can you can buy those or one thing that uh, I really like, or one of many things I really like about eToro is the is the smart portfolio. So we've seen a massive rise in thematic investing where people want to invest in a certain theme in the market. So that could be drone technology, for example, or that could be cybersecurity, but also on the crypto side, there are these ready-made portfolios where it could just be down to decentralized finance, or it could just be crypto itself. And the portfolios are sort of weighted in, in favor of different crypto assets. So the, the sort of the team of traders for Toro created them. So mm -hmm. it's a good way of maybe being diversified because mm -hmm. obviously new people that come in, they're not going to know enough about whatever industry it is, but let's say it's crypto. You might say to yourself, well, rather than just buying one particular crypto asset i might want to diversify myself by just getting in to a, a sort of smart portfolio that does all the weighting for me you know it might be it comprises of sort of 10 to 15 crypto assets so i diversify myself that way because of course what you're seeing at the moment with 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 crypto like you said is, is some crypto assets are massively down over the last few months mm. and some of them may not recover yeah. whereas if you do diversify yourself in a portfolio uh, dedicated to that can do it. It just means it's a good risk risk management tool that if one of those uh, assets in the portfolio don't do well, it's not going to ruin you because mm. the others can sort of hold it up. So that's not a bad way to to go about it. I would say for 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 those who want a little bit of exposure, they want to dip their their sort of toes in in the crypto world. That that's probably what I would would recommend. So you can just find one of these ready-made portfolios and it doesn't cost extra. You just go again, like copying people go, I'll, I'll do that then. You just... Yeah, that's right. So you can go onto the discover page and there's, uh, it says uh, smart portfolios. You click on that and, and then you can sort it however you like. So some people might say, well, I want to see what's performed well over the last 12 months, mm -hmm. you know, while past performance, of course, isn't, you know, a, um, Guaranteed. you know, yeah exactly a future results you might say okay well it's done well recently you know maybe the the current climate suits it okay let me go down that route or it might be the opposite you want to see what's maybe underperforming you know why what might that be when could it start to recover mm -hmm. you know you can you can sort of separate it however you want um but i you know I, I i say to people you know when i do if i do like a seminar or a webinar i say well what areas in the market do you think or in the world actually are going to be big in 10 years time and you'll get people saying electric cars. You'll get people saying cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. So why not actually invest in those themes? And there are portfolios dedicated to that. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were to say to these people, name me, you know, 10 companies dedicated to cybersecurity, they'd probably be like, uh, I, yeah, quite. I don't know. And to be honest, I would be the same. Yes. But there is, an, there's, you know, there's a ready-made portfolio for that. And you can see all the companies that are in there too. You can read up about them. But yeah, it's not a bad way to, to go about it. Absolutely. Well, give us a final word, Sam, for, for somebody who's really new to investing, just thinking, oh, I think I might, but I'm not sure about the markets. What, what's your final piece of advice? History is on, on, on the side of the investor, is, is what I would say. And look, you've got to be patient when you when you dip your toes into the investing world. You should do it when, in a, a period where if you were to lose that money, you, you can be OK with it. Now, history says you're not going to if you diversify yourself right and you were to just only invest in say the S&P 500 tracker, that has been proven over time to be a good thing. There are going to be peaks and troughs, but there's going to be more peaks than troughs. So it'd be, you know, trust the process uh, as the Arsenal football manager keeps telling me. Um, but yeah, that would be it for me. Just have the patience and uh, yeah, history is, is on your side. Thank you. Thank you, Sam, for taking the time. Really great to have you on. And you can sign up to eToro and take some of their tutorials at eToro.com, E-T-O-R-O, eToro.com. And it's entirely for free. Thank you for joining us on the Money Magpie podcast. Don't forget to share and like and generally gush about us. You know you want to. Today's podcast was presented by me, Jasmine Bertles, and you can follow me on Twitter at Jasmine and on Instagram at 
Jasmine Bertels. <laughs>